everybody, Aaron Kazins here, your Baltimore Ravens beat reporter for PennLive.com and the Harrisburg Patriot News. Uh, while we were all, you know, inside doing our social distance thing, uh, the Ravens, one of their biggest, their biggest free agent acquisition uh, of the year so far, Michael Brockers, that fell through. Brockers is going back to the Los Angeles Rams, and he will not play for the Ravens. And today what we're going to do is break down how that happened and, and let's take a look at where uh, the Ravens can go from here. So remember, on the very first day of free agency of the legal tampering period, the Ravens agreed to sign Brockers to a three-year deal worth $30 million, um, and, but then they didn't announce it, and there were some complications. Um, what had happened is that, is that the Ravens uh, got a report from an independent physician who did a physical on Micah Brockers who said there was some concern about Brockers' high ankle sprain that he suffered in the very last game of last season with the Los Angeles Rams. So the Ravens decided, okay, maybe maybe we can't sign this guy for three years, $30 million. With those injury concerns, they tried to work on a new contract. Uh, Brockers and his representatives and the Ravens could not come to a deal. The Ravens announced Friday morning, even though there were reports that we were going to sign Michael Brockers, we are not going to sign him very quickly. Very shortly after that, Brockers uh, wound up back with the Rams on a three-year deal uh, that has a similar amount of, of possible money in it, but... Uh, the guaranteed money is much lower with the Rams in, in his new deal. So where does that leave the Ravens? Well, <laughs> the Ravens, as I mentioned, they signed Brockers really early in free agency. They also traded for Clayus Campbell, and those were the, the kind of the centerpieces of their offseason was, was what they did there up front and how they reshaped their off, or their defensive line. And it seemed like it, it was a very good fit because you got Brandon Williams, who could be a nose tackle, who returns for the Ravens. You got Michael Brockers, who's a... A traditional defense tackle, good run stuffer, and then you got Campbell, who's one of the best interior pass rushers in the NFL. Now, all of a sudden, that looks a little different, and the Ravens made moves assuming that the Brockers was going to be one of their defensive pillars. They traded away Chris Wormley, who could play that defensive tackle spot, um, because they didn't seem to need him with Brockers in the fold. Uh, they also let Michael Pierce uh, go sign with the Vikings, and they haven't, you know, made another move at at defensive tackle. So, yeah, sure, the defensive line looks pretty good with, with Brandon Williams still in place, Clayus Campbell is there, and the Ravens have done a good job of building the depth with, with Jihad Ward and Justin Ellis. But the big thing of this offseason seemed like they were going to go from, you know, a shabby defensive line to a good defensive line when they traded to Campbell, and then a really deep and, and just all-around talented defensive line with three top-level top, top level starters in Brockers, Williams, and Campbell. Now, all of a sudden, you don't have that. So the Ravens could get about $5 million in cap space back for this year uh, with uh, with the deal falling through with Brockers. So what are they going to do with that? They have some options. Um, you know, in, in free agency, you can go read on read those, penlive.com uh, slash Baltimore dash Ravens. We looked at some of the options in free agency. Uh, the Ravens also have five picks in the first three rounds of the draft, so it's likely that they could go get a defensive tackle there. And and they also have some in-house options. Um you know, if, if they want to play Justin Ellis a little bit more at nose tackle, they could slide Brandon Williams over to defensive tackle. Um, you know, may, maybe they hope that Dalen Mack, who's a fifth-round pick last year, can play a little bit more. Maybe they can use Jahab Ward a little bit on the inside. But for now, the Ravens, you know, they're not in dire straits in any sense on the defensive line, but this certainly alters their offseason plan, and they're left with a little bit of a void at the very position that they spent a lot of time addressing early this offseason and we'll see over the next couple of days how they they kind of regroup how they pick themselves up after their top free agent signing of the offseason wound up deteriorating